Well, I'm absolutely delighted to tell you that I'm now joined in the studio by Quinton Kutsia. Quinton and I are actually old buddies. Quinton is a global keynote speaker. He's a wildlife specialist, an adventurer, and dare I say, a bug eater as well. Ah, so you remember that. <laughs> So many years ago, when I was wor working in talk radio, Quinton joined me in the studio and we had this fabulous conversation about if the world ran out of meat and what, what could we use as alternative protein sources and so on. And Quinton and I sat there eating locusts and cockroaches, cockroaches and scorpions and grasshoppers. Indeed, indeed. And it was wonderful. I loved that interview. And I think it's so appropriate to mention it now because, of course, your keynote speech this weekend at the PSASA is about thriving in tough times. Precisely. How, how we can be adaptable. So give us, some, give us some of your clues. Well, firstly, I think I go back to away from technology to when people had to thrive. There was no option but to thrive with what we've got. And that is so true on business today as well. What have we got? What can we use? How can we effectively use it and go forward? And for that reason, we use the Khoisan people. We go through an African scenario. We're in the bush. We're using real life bush experiences and going back thousands of years to when people were thriving in tough times. Nothing has changed right up to today. Mm -hmm. So in order to thrive, there are many things and many factors that have to be considered. Again, it's a direct parallel with, with, uh, with modern business. We've got to get our teams right. We've got to get our people trained. We've got to recognize opportunities and exploit them immediately. We've got to be fast, efficient, agile. We've got to be effective and professional. We also have to know our customer base. We've got to care for that customer base, build it and hold it. We've got to go out there and identify new markets, find out where other horizons are, always within the context of can we manage it with what we've got. Well, this is such an interesting point because I think that so often in modern business, and it doesn't matter if we're talking about being speakers or in any kind of business, right? We look around ourselves and there's always this kind of keeping up with the Joneses. You know, Bob's got a podcast, I need a, pod a podcast. You know, Sarah's got a video channel, I need a video channel. But very often it's not about the things that we don't have that we need. Very often it's actually about maximizing who and what we are already, surely. And improving on what we already have. Taking what we've got, building it, doing it better, continual improvement with whatever we're doing, because that is our resource. And to dream of, of comparing or to constantly keep up with the Joneses is not the way to do it. I don't believe. If you've got, if you're doing very well, you can bring in the good things and the new aspects and go that route. But ultimately, we take what we've got, we improve on it, we build it, we know it, we learn it properly, we identify that as our key objective and we strive to attain it at all costs. Now, Quentin, what's so interesting? I mean, you are, you are in, by no means new to the speaking game. I mean, you've been doing this longer than the vast majority of people here and you've done it incredibly well and set the bar in many, in many instances. What have you found to be your most successful strategies in times when you know, the speaking circuit just wasn't working out all that well for you. Because we all know business has peaks and troughs. You have some great years, you have some, some down years. It's just a normal cycle of business. What, what has been your strategy in terms of keeping on the top? There's no doubt about it whatsoever that the, the uh, landscape in the speaking circuit and speaking market has most definitely changed. Mm -hmm. There are so many different topics, different in many, many speakers. It's an entirely new ball game. So thriving in tough times would work in the speaking industry as well. And under all the principles we mentioned just now, you're mm -hmm. still holding on to customers. It's still a case of continuous improvement. It's still a case of understanding the market because we're selling a product. We're selling talks or keynotes or training, whatever it might be. And they've got to be appropriate to the customer or the client that's going to buy them. So you need 
to be especially aware of that market at all times. Mm -hmm. Exactly like a leopard is. High up in the tree, positioning itself, facing downwind. It can see what's happening downwind constantly, but it can smell what's happening behind us. Constantly aware entirely of the environment, what's happening around it. And only then will you be able to not thrive, but prosper. Now, there's something really interesting that you said to me just a little while ago when you, you were talking about old customers. And I find this fascinating because I think a lot of youngsters who want to get into the speaking market develop like one keynote and think that they can sell that one keynote forever. And I always think of that kind of like walking into a shop that only sells one product. It just doesn't make sense to me. Surely your best customer is your repeat customer. How do you evolve as a speaker to be able to offer your customer something new every year so that you don't become old and stale? That is a very important thing. I did for a long time have just one talk, but what, what you couldn't take away from that talk is that it covered absolute essentials, the basics. You can't get away from that. So it's important, one, to be able to, if you're good at something specific, it's pointless creating something completely different. By the way, one doesn't just create a new talk. Right. It's a difficult thing to do. And it's a difficult thing to ensure that it will be a seller. So if you're doing something well, my advice has always been to use that as the path, the roadmap. And what can you, that's, in fact, that's what you're becoming known for. Right. So build on that, but have enough difference to be able to differentiate, to offer some added value or different points from the first one. So we're looking for an evolution, not a reinvention. Not a, I don't be, I believe that you've constantly got to reinvent yourself, but be careful of totally reinventing what you were selling in the first place. Right. If you were selling product X, it doesn't mean that product Y is going to be a success. But if X was, then if you built on X, improved on X, did something else with X, It'll always start with X, but it mustn't be something entirely different. Right. Unless X didn't work at all, then my strongest advice would be change it, get rid of it, kick it out, burn it, start something else. And it might not necessarily even be in the speaking business. Quentin, my very last question, in terms of, I mean, we've, we've spoken about longevity and the repeat customer. How do you go back to an old customer and, and sell them something new? What is your strategy in how you present it or how you speak to them? How do you convince them that they need to buy you again? The perfect and ideal situation is that they asking you, right. what else have you got? What else can you do for us? In tough times, perhaps, you're not top of mind in their existence. And it's a good thing that you're keeping up with your old customers. I have no doubt, especially, of course, and this is the underlying factor, that if you've left some sort of an impression with them, it's much easier to get to the door. In fact, you're halfway there. But the thing is, did you do it well the first time? And if you did, always make a note of that because those are the ones that you have to follow up on. Mm -hmm. I think we all know in the speaking game when things didn't go well, when things went particularly well, and when things were brilliant. The brilliant ones are the ones that you need to follow up on because those are your successes. That's what you're good at. And that's going to provide you with prosperity for the future. Thank you so much for talking to us. You're welcome. And may we all be as good as Quentin Kutsia. How many years down the line? About 25. About 25 years down the line. There's something to really aspire to. Thanks very much for watching. We'll have more interviews with our keynote speakers at the PSASA 14th Annual Convention.